Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be discussing the question, are branch chain amino acids good for you? We know that people with excess body fat are more prone to becoming diabetic, but it's not just the amount of fat that's important, it's the distribution of the fat. Where the fat is stored makes all the difference. Two people can have the same amount of fat, but one may store the fat just under the skin. This is called subcutaneous fat. Another may store the same amount of fat in the muscles. When the fat infiltrates the muscles, the person starts to have trouble responding to insulin. This is called insulin resistance. Eventually, with enough insulin resistance, the person becomes diabetic. They can't control their glucose or sugar levels with insulin anymore. On the other hand, the person with subcutaneous fat is less likely to develop diabetes. This difference in fat distribution makes all the difference and can be seen on magnetic resonance imaging or MRI images of people's bodies. Can a plant-based diet affect the distribution of stored fat? Let's see what the study showed. Overweight diabetic patients were randomly divided into two groups. The first group was placed on a low-calorie cal typical diabetic diet. The second group was placed on a low-calorie vegetarian diet with no eggs and a small serving of yogurt daily. Both ate the same low number of calories so they would lose weight. So what happened? Both groups lost about the same amount of more benign subcutaneous fat, but only the, ve the vegetarian diet resulted in the loss of more dangerous fat stored in the muscles. This happened even though they were eating the same number of calories in the two groups. The vegetarian group even had less fat stored inside the muscle cells. This explains why vegans have the lowest risk of getting diabetes. So, this isn't just about being thinner. In another study, when people are matched to those who weigh about the same, vegans have significantly less fat stored in their muscles than meat eaters. This translates into a significantly lower rate of diabetes in vegans compared to meat eaters. Fat that's stored in muscles is likely to be the main cause of insulin resistance and therefore diabetes. What if you put people on a high fat diet? In just a single week, the fat in their muscles increases by an astonishing 54%. What if you put people on a high protein diet? When people lose weight, their diabetes usually improves. However, in people eating a high protein diet, this benefit of weight loss may be lost. People were asked to eat a low calorie diet until they lost one tenth of their weight. In one group, the amount of protein eaten was the normal amount. In the other group, they were given a high protein diet. Both groups lost 10% of their body weight. The significant loss of body weight usually leads to a noticeable improvement in diabetes. However, in the people eating the high protein diet, even though they lost one tenth of their body weight, there was no improvement in their diabetes. The high protein intake eliminated the benefit of weight loss. The study authors concluded that the protein content of a weight loss diet is very important in determining if the diet will improve diabetes and insulin resistance. But does this mean that all protein has this effect? When looking at all the studies done using protein from animals, the protein did have an overall negative effect on diabetes. Animal protein includes protein in all forms of meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy products. However, when looking at the combined results of studies using protein from plants, the plant protein looked to be neutral or actually helped improve diabetes. Not all protein is bad for diabetes. It's protein from animal sources that are particularly bad for diabetes. Studies have been performed where people were randomly assigned to have their protein source switch from animal pro proteins to plant proteins or to remain on animal proteins. These studies also showed that replacing animal proteins with plant proteins caused significant improvement in the control of diabetes. What about animal proteins is causing this problem with insulin resistance and diabetes? Proteins are made of amino acids. It is believed that the branch chain amino acids may be the problem. The branch chain amino acids are leucine, isoline, and valine, and they are concentrated in animal proteins. They have been associated with obesity and increased risk of diabetes. The levels can be dropped by switching to plant proteins. The question is, can we specifically blame these branch chain amino acids? Yes. A study was conducted with two groups of people. One group ate a low protein diet low in branch chain amino acids. The other group ate a typical American diet. The low protein group had a significant improvement in glucose control, weight loss, and total body fat, even though they ate more calories. They lost about 5 pounds more in just over a month. How did they limit their protein intake? They were just asked to eat the recommended amount of protein, not any lower. The problem is that the average American diet is much higher in protein than the recommended amount. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what videos you want next. Thanks.